Hey. Hey. Got Max screaming all the way from your. I know if you're missing comedy, this is the place to be. Um, we've had an interesting week. Shops are open again. Yeah. Anyone going shopping? No. Okay. Cool. Um, I see Penny's is open. Penny's is like the behemoth of Irish uh, retail. <laughs> Um, uh, which was great because then Irish people got to go back to buying, you know, the essentials, socks, underpants, and other cheap plastics. Um, what I liked, Penny's uh, reassured customers that all their stuff <laughs> were being sanitized, uh, the traditional Irish way, with the power washer, <laughs> up against a wall, out the back. <laughs> like, you know, manager, staff bonding, you know, I, yeah. Staff love it, but uh, I know I, I don't know how Penny's treat their uh, staff, but I just think it's a bit mean that they named the company after what they paid them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know, like the whole shopping experience is tough. Like, you ever walk into a shop and a customer thinks you work there? Like, I remember one time I walked into this establishment and the guy was so pushy. Like, I think maybe it was what I was wearing. Um, but I just hope that brothel gets a five star rating, you know? You know really, really push. Uh, yeah, so let's start the show. Let us see. Uh, I'm just getting used to this technology. There we go. Here's our uh, our stand ups. How are we doing, guys? Hi. Good. We good. We good. Ryan, yeah, you're. Oh, good. You're having a bit of a disco in the background. Having a bit of crack there. My face is still behind that sign. I know, I can change yeah. it. <laughs> I feel like I'm in an illegal video. I was like, oh, what's he doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the look has a massive beard. Uh, you should keep it on testimony in court. <laughs> <laughs> Against you, Seamus. Part of it really hits you hard, Brian. That, oh, that beard. I'm telling you. It's not easy. You know what I mean? It's not easy. No, no, no. no. So, yeah, we the all barbers. Do the barbers are reopening and they're not doing beards to begin with, which is devastating. That's, that's I do. beard <laughs> racism. That's probably yeah. they're probably telling you Finn, they're just afraid. <laughs> <laughs> a month, a month's work. <laughs> 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 I'm you that, Brian. They're like, yeah, we're not doing for me, no. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh oh. My lights just died. Okay, so yeah, let's start off. Let's start off the show. So, uh, Brian, you're uh, you're up first. How are Hello. you? I'm fine. It's uh, you what you know what I mean. Nothing's happened for three months. I don't really have any emotions or feelings. Um, uh, I mean, not have... that I had them. Not that I had them to begin with. I'm grand, Jack. I'm grand. I'm just waiting for this all to end. Um, this gig, not not the lockdown. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's the uh, <laughs> and that's about it. Yeah, I don't really have any exciting news for you, to be honest. I, I'm I hear fine. You're going to do a podcast. Yeah, there's a rumor that I started myself uh, <sighs> that I'm going <laughs> that I'm going to do a podcast. Uh, it's going to be called the Brian Gallagher Show. It's been uh, it's been about to drop, uh, as they say uh, in the industry. It's been about to drop Where for the last the month. What well, <laughs> the and show? And I was kind of stuck on that for a while. And then I thought, fuck it, I'll do what I normally do, and I'll stick myself in the middle of it, yeah. and uh, I'll see what happens. Yeah, it should be it should be a bit of fun. Hopefully, when it Jack Jack, you have a podcast, so you know the you know the stress of getting it actually started. Uh, but once I get it started, it should be fine. I've all, all my equipment and bits and pieces and software and you sound got, like, stuff. A big mic. Yeah, I had a big mic and it broke, and then I had to get another big mic, and I got that delivered, and it didn't work. And I'm waiting for that replacement to arrive, and then I should be good to go. So hopefully in a week's time I'll have a couple of episodes out. And what what's your podcast going to be like? Is it going to be just you maybe like Bill Burr, like riffing, or are you going to be? Because I know you're a little bit political. You like the politics. I am. Oh, I'm a rabid animal for the politics. Um, <laughs> I'm. Um, I'm. A, I'm a foci- I'm what I call a socialist. You know. So yeah. not, not really. Not really fully committed, and I love cash, uh, especially one that cash I don't have to pay tax on. But uh, also, uh, everyone should have a house and free burgers. Uh, that's kind of my, my manifesto. It's going to be little touching on politics, touching on racism, touching on 
all sorts of stuff. But it's going to be funny and telling stories from my life and things like that. That's the general idea. I'm kind of going to see where it goes. I have a loose template to work with from where I start and where it ends. And then the middle is going to be like jumping off of different points to see where it goes. Stream of consciousness kind of bit of crack, you know, hopefully. Yeah, sure. even my, my own podcast, I didn't think anybody would listen to it. And it's okay. You know, people... Yeah. People are mostly bored, you know. They look at us. <laughs> I'm walking. I'm walking, yeah, I'm walking around with a big head. We got into double digits. Sorry, what was the check? I'm walking around with a big head because I got into double digits. It's like, yes. right, <laughs> how many com- how many computers does Siobhan on? Getting all like Gary to download it for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Running a marathon every day on repeat, like you know, just, <laughs> oh wow, hundreds. <laughs> so Brian, are you ready to uh, hit the stage? No, absolutely. I'm here ready to uh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> They want a realistic experience. Anybody watching this wants a realistic comedian experience. It's like, is it? Is this your first gig? No. No. Ooh, ooh, jeez. At least Stackpool is on this. I look okay. I look okay. <laughs> Go in a few seconds. All right, guys. Hey, if you're at home, put your hands together for the wonderful Brian Gallagher. Woo! 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 Stop it! Thanks a million. Oh Jesus! It's uh. It's terrible to see most of you, um, but it's great, to, uh, it's, great, it's great to be doing something. I, I was thinking about, I'm not going to keep it too long or bore you with too much, but like I was thinking about racism and the whole crack that's going on. And I have an active interest in racism. Not that I'm racist myself, but uh, well, no, I'm not really. I, uh, I just find it a really interesting topic and how people like deal with other people and how people relate to other people in life and stuff. And I travel a bit when I was younger and had lots of different experiences, generally as a very naive uh, white child, basically, uh, traveling the world, trying to get to know people of different cultures, invariably putting my foot in it all the time. But then again, occasionally you'd meet like really crazy people. And it taught me a lot about understanding. And one time I was working in a vineyard and it was me and a couple of other kids from teenagers and guys in the early 20s from like America, Australia, New Zealand. I was in New Zealand and I was just a young guy hanging about, having a great time. There was people on one end of the vineyard from Thailand. There was people on the other end of the vineyard from Iraq at the time, and then there was oh, I was still Iraq and Iraq at the time. At the time, <laughs> we were there, and uh, there was uh, basically me and a lot of other like white kids were working together, but we didn't really realize we were all working together as a team because we were uh, all white, and we didn't quite quite twig this because our boss, our foreman, was this giant Australian guy, huge, six foot four, wore nothing but tiny tiny shorts, right, nothing else. Had a giant swastika tattoo on his back, right? Fucking huge swastika tattoo on his back, which kind of would explain why we were all white working on his team, right? <laughs> but every single lunchtime, right? Every single lunchtime, he would say really nasty, horrible, racist things about all the other nationalities who worked in the other parts of the vineyard. I mean, disgusting things now, really racist stuff. And every time he did, we said, because <laughs> this wasn't Twitter. This man was fucking serious, right? He could have he could have killed us. So we had to pretend that he was hilarious. Until one day he said, You know what I love about you Irish and English kids? We we're like, Oh, what? I love your queen. <laughs> <laughs> so it was me and me and one other Irish guy, and we just went, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a minute, you racist bastard, right? <laughs> and then the temper left us, and we had to fucking leg it, right? Because this guy was insane. But, like, all of a sudden, it was a problem when it was about us, right? And that's kind of how I feel about racism in general. Now, when it's suddenly about you, it kind of makes a difference. Now, granted, I could have held up a tricolor square and walked around the vineyard for a while to tell people white, white Irish lives matter, you know? Uh, <laughs> but, I, but I didn't. I did give him a reading list of uh, of Irish history, though. I gave him uh, a list of 27 books that I'm sure he read and has now decided that racism is a terrible thing. And he's probably had that tattoo removed and is living a great life uh, working somewhere, probably a multinational tech corporation saving the planet. <laughs> that's, my, that's my story. <laughs> that's it. I'm finished. I'm finished. <laughs> especially at the climate at the moment look at now he's hiding 
<laughs> Thanks a minute. Yeah. yeah. Topical. Yeah. It's mad. The world is on fucking fire, but it's always been on fire. We just know it now more. We just, yeah. Social media closed it. Yeah. Amen. Definitely. Definitely. I kind of realized I didn't tell you guys a running order. No. You know. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh, that's right. I was first. I was first, guys. Just anybody who's been there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to keep you on your toes. You keep know? Um, toes. Yeah. Also, yeah. Yeah, for the viewers listening, um, thank you, uh, Ryan. You got some great claps, clap emojis. Thank you, Susie, Stephen, Dave, and Stephen again. Two Stephens, one Susie. And I can day. actually. I can tell what? you, I heard Javon laughing in the sitting room. So fantastic. <laughs> Actually, She's probably you listening to your podcast drunk. again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a comedian. Uh, <laughs> Save title, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Seamus, uh, you're, you're all right to go next, yeah? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know when I was going to go, so now or never. <laughs> now, I, I vote. I vote never. Is that an option here? <laughs> I mean, we can get rid of people on. You know, I can just. just I've got that power, but I can bring him in. Oh, hey! Can I actually say something? It's, it's weird. Yeah, I have power. Yeah, go on. The the funniest Twitter exchange that I ever saw was between Seamus and Brian. And Brian, you called Seamus a troll and you said, come under the bridge and say it to my face. I laughed for about two months. <laughs> that was ages ago. Like, if you remember that, that was ages ago. I, I don't remember that. Uh, very good. Very good. He is such a... Limerick, aren't you? What? Hmm? Huh? Remember you're both from Limerick? Both from Limerick, yeah. Both. Well, well, now there's a debate about that, right? Because I'll put it to you like this, Jack, right? I'm from a part of Limerick that if you go into Limerick City and you tell them where I'm from, they'll say, that's not Limerick, that's Kerry, right? Because they're bastards, right? But it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's fucking miles away, right? Now, that's where I'm from. Seamus is a good half-hour drive past where I'm from towards what we'll call Kerry. So what? where, <laughs> he, where do you think he's from? Do you know what I mean? He's from Kerry. He says Limerick. Like a Limerick. Where, Seamus, where did you go to secondary school? I went to secondary school in Kerry. In Kerry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you determine where somebody is from. How far it's away like do you have to be from Limerick to go to a different county secondary school? That's all I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I don't I think don't Kilkenny went to a school in Leash. <laughs> who went to Limerick? Who went to Limerick? Bullying Siobhan has spoken in the comments. Yeah. Brian is Brian from is Kerry. From Kerry. She said you're from Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> She's actually from Kerry, isn't she? But which is worse? Oh, I can see the comments now. I couldn't see them before. Yeah. Oh, I just see the comments. Anyway, oh, fuck you, Siobhan. Like, where do you feel like you're from? You know, Brian was on about racism, but now he's like, no, you're from... Yeah. You're from... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brian Dare, which is... He's talking about socialism, and he's a full Limerick man because a real Limerick man wouldn't try and sow division like Brian was sowing there. You know? That's exactly what Limerick would uh, do. <laughs> That's all we do. Brian's an awful Nick Harry. The original use for the hurling in Limerick was for stirring the pot, it wasn't for actual sport at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I. I uh, I, st I have a strong affinity for Kerry. It's a beautiful county. I am a proud Limerick man, but, you know, I've got a lot of uh, Kerry heritage in my background. So I wouldn't, wouldn't take kindly to Kerry being used as an insult by some of our other comedians on here. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we won't have any, you know, Kerry racism. Um, and how yeah. was your quarantine? Is this... Yeah, good. Oh, uh, fantastic. Just, you know, doing so many things. And, and going so many places. Um, literally every conversation just boils down to, and what have you eaten today? Like that's just, <laughs> after a while, like, have, have you eaten a, an, a, an entire packet of rice cakes just to feel something above ennui? Like that's <laughs> essentially <laughs> what you I presume you could relate to the song Hurt. Just, just see yeah. how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, because um, I know, like everybody here is comedians. We all love going out, doing gigs, meeting people. That's that's what keeps you going. That's that's, that's what's your 
It's like, yeah, that's that's your release valve for pain is comedy. But without that release valve, it's just ah, ah, oh my god, oh my feelings. I have to look at my feelings. I have to recognize them. I have to listen to my song. <laughs> Brenda stuff. I know, like quarantine, we were like we were alone with ourselves for a long time. You know, too yeah, too long. way too long. Mm. Yeah, listen to my head. You need to no. drink more. Drink more. It's, uh, it's a very Smoke simple solution. Yeah. Smoke some weed. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you're sad, you should be drinking more. <laughs> more. <laughs> Drown out the well, pain. I'm actually glad I brought you on, Seamus. If anything, just to check with your mental health, you know? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I think I'd be, I'd be more terrified of somebody who just went through lockdown. They're like, well, I'm absolutely fine. It's been great from day one. Like that person's a fucking cyborg. Wanker. That's a yeah, more okay. thing to put it. Yeah. No. If Jess, this hasn't what happened affected to you? you in some way. I'm sorry, but if this hasn't affected you in some way, you're a total wanker because it's completely yeah. head fucked an entire industry alone in the comedy section. Like we're we're screwed unless you're gigging in a garden. Which, in fairness, is a pretty <laughs> epic setup. <laughs> I mean, we used to do that, actually. Garden? Who we has a do, garden now? We, we used to do yeah. gigs in a garden here in uh, Limerick uh, back in college. And I think there was someone found in another garden a few doors down while those gigs were going on. It was great. It was a great time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We used to have we used to have a wall of fame of comedians and it was like Richard Pryor and then like the old lads from oh, wow. the comedy scene. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> haircuts and it's like Justin Bieber and you're like, well, he's never been here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Well, Seamus, are you ready to hit the stage? You know, get oh. all that pain out. So, so I start with my classic for the viewers watching. My name is Seamus. Uh, for anybody not familiar with Ireland, don't go. Don't go. Oh, yes. don't go. Oh, yes. Okay, oh. so everybody, big round of applause for Seamus Stackpool. Woo! 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! So thank you. A massive, massive round of applause to our MC, Jack McKenna. Jack Attack, as I like to call him. Woo! But um, he, he's um, lodged a liable case against me for calling him Jack Attack. Um, <laughs> But as I said, my name is Seamus. Uh, for anybody not from Ireland or not familiar with Irish names, that name again is Seamus, not Siamus. Uh, Siamus is more so what a Canadian does when they look out the window. But now they look out and they see a moose. The moose is wearing a mask. Uh, and the moose is making sure it doesn't touch his face with his hooves. Um, because the Canadian response to, to COVID-19 has been exemplary. You know, really, it's been fantastic. Um, but I think we've all, we've all been inside... Uh, for a long time uh, okay. and like basically streaming services are being used like never before everybody's watching binge watching everything like that uh, nobody's ever heard a bit of stand-up material about binge watching before so this is real cutting edge stuff um, <laughs> but, like people keep on talking like recommending um, documentaries and I love documentaries when I was a kid like watching documentaries about like history and watching the documentaries about nature like, I especially loved, you know, on a Sunday afternoon after dinner, you'd be watching one about nature and there'd be a heartbreaking scene where like a hyena would come across like some baby gazelle and the hyena would start eating the baby gazelle. And the narrator would be like, well, we would love to save the baby gazelle. This is nature and we must let nature take its course. And you don't have documentaries like that. Now, now it's stuff like fucking making a murderer and there's a lot of true crime podcasts and true crime documentaries and i'm not a big fan of documentaries about true crime because i feel the same way about documentaries about true crime like i do about comedy i would rather be doing it myself than watching it you know um, <laughs> and then the other the other sort of big genre of documentary that's out is like guys doing jobs and being watched doing jobs. It's like guys going to fucking storage lots and bidding on auctions to get storage stuff, or guys building motorcycles, or guys flying old planes, ice road truckers. And it's, it's become documentaries about watching people doing jobs. Not about a subject, but just watching people do jobs. And I think eventually they'll run out of occupations. And the last one left 
will be film crew. And you'll just have film crew <laughs> in the wild watching each other. And then one of them will be attacked by a lion. And the lion will be eating the film crew. And the other crew that crowd are just going to be there going, we would love to save the other film crew, but this is nature and we have to let it take its course. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Woo! Woo! David. Woo! 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 That was hilarious. So, do you like David Attenborough? <laughs> I love David Attenborough. He's he's my number one fave. Yeah, it's his voice, the way it speaks. Sounds like, it sounds like <laughs> it's, it's like he was here. <laughs> it's like he's in the It's like his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I know. When he dies, I'll just take over. And be like, can we have record? <laughs> nice, nice. Um, <laughs> it's, it's breaking up here. <laughs> Am I breaking up? Oh, we're proud of it. For me, <laughs> I need to sort my internet. Right, so next we've got Jess. Jess, how, how are you? How are you? Ah, oh, look at you in your black and white. I know, my life <laughs> My light broke, so I look like I'm in a no more. Yeah, uh, very Ed Wood of you. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone knows Jack is broadcasting from the 1950s. <laughs> <laughs> well, quiet, yes, baby. How you doing? Say, Jack's in a dream. Hello, say. <laughs> How's your quarantine been? So you, you haven't, you were saying anyone who says that their life has been bettered is an arsehole. Total wanker. Because it can't be true. There is very little that can keep you occupied for the, what, 20 hours a day you're awake in the same space. I, I have to say, oh, hats to, uh, off to any parents out there because kids are... Now, not for me. I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum, though. I'm single. Um, not that I want to broadcast that, but you know how hard it is for <laughs> single you know, to get the raw. I think you've already done that. Yeah. Pretty much, but uh, yeah. pretty much broadcasted all over the flipping nation there. I, I mean that in the sense for any viewers, uh, no, there's not only fans. Uh, Jess was on first dates. Mm. No. Oh. Did you say only fans? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all the boys are like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it went really well. Um, we had one date after the show. Did you mean it was, uh, was it. Went to see my family in the zoo, and uh, they didn't get along. So. <laughs> well, he's a good guy. Uh, we actually got on really well. We're we're starting a podcast together. So there you go. Oh, really? Oh wow. Yeah, we are. Really? Right. So we're gonna call it just uh, just mates. Call it something really random, like you know, make sure everyone's talking about us. We didn't hook up. We didn't get together. We're just gonna talk, probably about stuff everyone hates talking about. But you know, sex and riding and single dating and all the online stuff that just doesn't work. And like. Tinder over, I don't know how people are even dealing with Tinder. I just went global on Tinder for the crack last week. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a lot more fun than talking to lads in the US. You're global. You're looking at lads and like... Took away, the, took, took away the L restrictions, you know, because I could, because I can't do it at home. <laughs> and um, took off that restriction button and went global on Tinder. So you can go on global on Tinder and just map lads who are like, yeah, I'll go global. You're talking with all these different people from all over the world. Um, I, really, I really kind of took an interest in the Americans purely because it was in the middle of the riots and the protests and, mm. um, you know, um, a lot of people don't know over in the US that there's actually multi number of different races and cultures and diversities here. They, they just said, well, we just thought there was just white Irish people there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Unmatch. <laughs> it's fun though. Oh, it's yeah. fun to find out how, how completely irrelevant our life is to somebody over there and, you know, mm. educate some of them but yeah i found that just the whole being single during lockdown it's not fun because you can't get the ride and you know what the dutch prepared everybody they were like headlines two weeks before lockdown get yourself a sex buddy you're going to need it for a couple of weeks lads we're going into lockdown is that sales for Ann summers you know get yourself a buddy yeah I've They've closed down now, so that doesn't work out well for them. <laughs> I've several of those kind of buddies in my drawer here, and all of them are bad. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> well, look, it, it, look, I'm just glad we're out on the other side, lads, because it could mean that potentially we could put on our own little comedy setup in July that could potentially have been there anyway, but we might just do our willy-nilly ourselves in the next couple of weeks. 
when we're allowed to have, you know, four people in the garden uh, with, with drink, you know, but I do... We can record it and put it up. I don't know. I could, I could. You know, I'm, I'm learning how to speak into microphones, which is nice. I kind of lost the, the, the knack there for a while because, you know, COVID. Can we blame COVID for everything now, though? Like, everything. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I spilled okay. tea because of COVID there. 100% COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it's all out like there. I want to get banners done where it just has fuck COVID over and just hoodies and nobody's done it. No one's done it. Let's just get it. Get it out there. Get it for Christmas. Get it for the second round. Apparently it's coming. <laughs> when the COVID is, so we can't be like, oh, who created? Because then you don't want to be racist to the Chinese. You know? <laughs> so we're all like, all right. Let's, yeah, I know. Let's just no. <laughs> no. This is it. Right, I, I presume this will be in Brian's podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm actually recording this so I can go. And then he said this and play little clips of what you've all said. <laughs> so racism in Irish comedy. It's good that he already put the black and grey filter over himself so you don't have to later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, dun, dun, dun. China, China, I think China. It's <laughs> What a race. The next Irish Trump. Um, <laughs> no, Have I any of you kind of um, learning skills? Did what? anybody did anybody upskill? You know, do they personally develop themselves over the lockdown? Too big a job. I paid for a call. I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna see what you're at as I am. I I am 40 years old this year and uh, couldn't get to celebrate because of lockdown. But mm. um what Gosh. I did learn to do after 20 years. I was a learn to roll a joint. Well, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. I don't have to ask anyone anymore. Now I can actually do it myself. So thank you, and you're all very welcome to sample my goods. Um, if you don't mind getting COVID, because I have to still lick to see you. But there you go. I'm excited. Just need yeah. to. Yeah. Imagine being pulled over by the guards after that. It's like, are you high? <laughs> oh no, it's the COVID. It's the COVID. It's like a- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you take our first step out after quarantine and just get fucking slapped on the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> you weed smoker, you. We're watching it live. So <laughs> much going. One of your biggest fans, yeah. Prick. yeah. <laughs> Imagine they can't have you. Talking to one of my colleagues say about like, like, do you think Irish strippers have the guard uniform? Like you know the the luminous waistcoat and the hat. Do you think they? I think no. they have pink handcuffs. I, I've heard of. I <laughs> I think I mean, you were trying to be a hot for your partner. If you were trying to dress it up and do the whole striptease, would you put on a guard a uniform to sex it up? I wouldn't even just do that. I put on everything. I put on. <laughs> You've been a naughty girl now. Just come here to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know how fast you were going, girl. <laughs> Stop it, Seamus. Uh, you're turning me on. I'm feeling uncomfortable. I wouldn't be. I don't even want to. Right, right. Yes, are you ready to hit the stage and give uh, the world? Oh, not really, but okay. Okay, guys. Right, big clap, big round of applause for this Colin. Well, it's great to be back looking at myself on the screen. I suppose it's better than looking at whoever else is out there, but at least I know how offensive my face can be to you. You're lucky, though, because... Um, okay, well, I put on makeup, which is, is an ode to you guys, so you're welcome. I didn't wash my hair, but I did straighten it and say, oh, it'll do. And I put the hoops in because it's a special occasion, and the bigger the hoop, you finish that. So um, what I did want to kind of say was... Um, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about the idea of us moving into phase three soon enough. I think phase two was deadly. The fact that they're calling it phase two plus means we did well in the first phase. So uh, it's always nice to get a bit of a bit of feedback. But um, I, I'm really, I'm really annoyed with with Dr. Hulan. I think overall the government played a great game, and I think we're moving into the end of Mad Max into a new generation of world. But it's been apocalyptic, I think that's fair to say. And, and, and as I said earlier, I think it's been the most affected on those people who can't get the right. Um, mainly because we're not being told when we can go back in the arena. We're not told when we can get the shift at Coppers, because that's not even an option anymore. And that was like the last resort. So 
We can't go to a resort. You're not going to get the shift and the beat and now, are you? You could go over to Greece if you want, but you're probably going to get the COVID or AIDS. You know, potato, potato at this stage, lads. That's the big problem. But, um, yeah, I just, I'm really upset with him. And the other thing about it is my friend was telling me that Dr. Hoolan, he thinks, is really sexy. Yes, my male friend thinks Dr. Hoolan's really sexy. And apparently he's receiving an awful lot of women's <laughs> underwear post. Um, personally, I think it's just because of his title. Um, because I think, I don't think Sam McConkie's getting the same kind of feedback. Do you know what I mean? Even though that's more of a relative name. I think, anyway, McConkie kind of sounds like riding but that's probably because everything i say now sounds like riding because i'm not getting the ride ever again <laughs> tinder is now literally a virtual playground of shite and boredom and if i have to say hi how are you how's covid treating you again to somebody i think i might actually just kill myself um but nobody would know because no one could find me for three or four weeks because we've all been locked in to our gas. So um, I don't know about you. My personal upskill, as I said, was learning to roll joints. Uh, thankfully, my best friend learned to cook her face off. And what I mean by that is she bakes, she cooks all the food. Uh, she does all the food, all the bread, all the sourdough bread one can eat. But just puts it up on Instagram so I can see what she's made. She doesn't give me any, which is pretty sound. But um, you know, I think the only thing I've managed to, to kind of learn out of this is... Um, you know, you're only going to kind of gain weight sitting down. So um, if I can get the ride, if anyone's out there looking for, for a quick one, um, and what I mean by that is it would have to be highly, kind of a highly, kind of a highly endurance kind of thing, like kind of a gym thing. I'm up for a gym ride. Not like JIM, but a gym ride. <laughs> a gym ride, work it out, get the carbs burning, get those calories down so I can get back outside and be ready for, you know, when I can do this in front of people. And we can spit at them like we used to. I'm just like a bye now. Love you, bye. Woo! Thank you. And uh, like Jess, follow her on, on Instagram. Yeah. You never know. I'll stop you. All good. Yeah, I do things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, uh, and also, uh, listeners, keep those. Um, <laughs> Comments coming. I mean, even Murphy said only fans. Laughy face, laughy face. Um, maybe that's what we could do. We get some lonely fans. Maybe that could be my next episode. We get a few and we just talk. They can promote their, their channels. Anyway, right. Let's get back to the show. Uh, Jack Horrigan and the mattress. Woo! Do you have that mattress? Hello. The it's, fucking, it's my studio wall there, Jack. Is that, is that still your bed when you have rows with the girlfriend? <laughs> uh this was from the spare room fucking um yeah that's my studio i built a studio fucking joe rogan eat your heart out by <laughs> don't know for your podcast <laughs> i have an archery i have an archery range under the side too well another day that's good <laughs> oh the delay like is a nightmare oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a sword as well? <laughs> 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 Go on, <Jamie. laughs> You're laughing about something. you're laughing about something in the past. <sighs> don't, don't bully Jack. Soft. What's your podcast called hear. again? You can't hear. Uh, safe. No, I, I, I can't. I can hear you now. Don't ruin the streak. Uh, safe topics. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, safe topics. Uh, what do you guys talk about? <laughs> Uh, what are you laughing? The delay. He's counting <laughs> out the delay. <laughs> it's like the I've actually, day. since you asked that last question, I've gone downstairs, um, made some these, and came uh -huh. back. Um, <laughs> uh, no, it's just me ranting by whatever I do. I just monkey bar from one talk to another. So if one story comes into my head during the week, I'll jot it down, and then when I say that, another one will come. Um, it's more the, the goal is for like i don't know if there is a muscle just keep just keep fucking being in the habit of telling stories and just shooting off the cuff and shit no direction and uh no hope that sounds good <laughs> especially the no hope bitch bullying all the other contestants <laughs> what <laughs> 
Switch? I was like, I said, I think Brian is, uh, <laughs> is taking over. Okay. I mean, who knows? Who knows, bye. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, exactly. So, Jack, do you want to? I'm really, I'm really happy to know about this delay as we approach me doing jokes. That's really fun. <laughs> reassuring. I'd say just take your time. I'm not. I'm not nervous. <laughs> Don't be. Take your time. We'll see what happens. All right, everybody, put your hands together for Jack Corrigan. Woo! 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 Thank you, Jack. I, know, I just said I go through the motions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's the crack? I've been, I've been a really unique approach to uh, to quarantine. Actually, I got crazy news during the week. Did you know that there's a pandemic? <laughs> Fuck, I, I was <laughs> away to find out. Um, I was just living as I do. You know, I just thought it was a quiet month or two, but... <laughs> There you go. Uh, I took a real unique approach, man. I, I guarantee you none of you have done this. I've watched a load of films. Oh, creative old man on the bike. Um, do you know, I, I took the leap and we watched Star Wars because we had access to all of them and I'd never seen any of them. And fucking, I loved them. Like, Star Wars was the shit. But I just couldn't get over when I was picking the thing. And I was like, the first one, 1977. I was like... Is that not a, it? Like, does that blow anyone else's mind that the first Star Wars was in 19, 1977? Like, we had a visual representation of another galaxy 20 years before we had condoms. Is that fucking not insane? <laughs> Is that not insane? <laughs> like, for 20, for 20 years, Yoda was in Ireland and condoms weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? My father is like the, the second youngest of 10. You know what I mean? Like if if, <laughs> if we, we might have never had to be alive. Like how how great would that have been? <laughs> Fucking why? Like I, I actually got pissed off then. That like I was like, why the fuck didn't uh, they should have made Star Wars like more relevant? Like imagine Yoda was just like fucking pull out. You must too many children you have. <laughs> We're probably running out of time yet already. Jesus, but what else did I watch? You know we watched Greece. What a load of shit. Greece is. Greece is the worst fucking film. I have, I don't give a fuck what way you spin it. I don't care if you like the songs. It is dog shit. It's a bunch of 50-year-old fucking men wearing leather jackets in high school. So is it? am I the only person that noticed they can build a flying car, but they can't graduate high school? Is that crazy? <laughs> am I crazy to know that? Is that not completely what happened? It's the only fucking school in the world with chairlifts. Danny is chasing Sandy up the stairs with a fucking chairlift and a leather jacket. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. I don't even know. Uh, like Elon Musk is spending his whole life making fucking cars and the boys are flying around 40 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. Last thing, it's not even a joke, it's just an observation. I found out recently, you know that dumb song that's like, oh, baby, baby. He's talking about eating cake at the ocean. I don't have a joke. That's just a pile of shit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Patrick. Woo. 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 Give it sex yes, advice. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. see that. That, that is sure definitely that. Um, especially like, like ha, um, Luke and Leia kiss, like it should be like maybe less than one, don't kiss your siblings. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's what they took from it. That's what Ireland took from it. They were like, oh, is yeah. that okay? <laughs> Incest, a game the whole family can play. Come <laughs> <laughs> oh, on, Brian, come on. <laughs> yeah, just blame COVID. Uh, it's the sister COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I think anyway, Brian. Brian Ooh. Mack. You got How Brian you? G in the corner. Woo! How are you, Brian? Grand. Ask. I I I got a glass of water delivered because I think my girlfriend's actually watching this at the moment and saw that I ran out. So that's good. <laughs> that's good. What service? Um so it's not pints you're after, it's it's water. 
Uh, unless there's whiskey in it, I have no idea. No, no pints. Pint. It's a pint of water, <clears throat> if that's any equivalent. <laughs> You know, you know what they say about the fella drinking water from the pub? Shite crack. Yeah. Lift home. Or well hydrated. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, great pores. Um, <laughs> so, well, tell me about uh, your uh, night, uh, Mike Drop in Limerick. Oh my God, we've got a massive Limerick night. This is Rascal Company Limerick night. Um, I, I'm, yeah, not, I'm a blow in to Limerick. I'm not from Limerick, unfortunately. I just live here. Where are you so. from? Uh, God knows. <laughs> I've been I uh, Dublin, Wicklow, Carlow, Kilkenny, Galway, uh, family from Mees. It's all over the place. I just settled no, here. Man. He's not you're exactly. Cavan. Cavan. Oh, I, I, I think I think I have family in Cavan actually. <laughs> I was on Ray Darcy last year, and I was saying like, oh, I'm from all over the place, and he was like, oh, bank manager. I was like, what? And he was like, your dad was a bank manager. And I was like, did you know him? And he was like, no, I just guessed that he was a bank manager. And I was like, oh, well, you were right. <laughs> so, oh, <wow>. And the <laughs> serial killer. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. He knows Red bank manager that mercy. Or a bank teller or something. I, I think he, uh, there, there was a thing where, like, if you were, you didn't go to college, you went and worked in the bank and they would assign you to different places all over the country. Like, like an army so. brat. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> we have so many smaller. houses in this town. We have to move. Ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> and did you move to Limerick for like college, or did you grow up in Limerick? Uh, you know, I moved in 2013 for college, and now I'm working in the city. So, and then yeah, we run myself and Kevin O'Connor run Mike Drop Comedy in the commercial, but that's on hold until uh, further notice. Ke Kevin, uh, the most we've done is Kevin shaved his beard. Which he hasn't shaved for like seven years, and he raised, I think, I think either fifteen hundred or two thousand for Milford the Hospice here. So, and I think uh, there might be a link if you want to donate. But it's night and day compared. He was uh, there was people saying they knew him, they knew a Kevin O'Connor like when he was like fourteen, and then they met him later in life with the beard, and they thought it was a different Kevin O'Connor. So, <laughs> never met him. But I, like imagine Brian shaved his beard. Like <laughs> I haven't I shaved since. Yeah, you get about two hundred grand, mate. Like. Would I? Uh, for myself? Yeah, I don't it. I'm, I'm not Brian, shaving this for charity. Brian, you're only 15. Yeah. You don't get any fibs. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do? And uh, you do you want to ever like... Plat Platted, yeah. Through Viking style. Mm. Do it now, live on air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I if you want, somebody somebody, plat somebody did plat it once. There was three. I can get three plats in that. Easy. Right. I could get eight. Yeah. Eight. Oh, fuck yeah. you! Did learn to roll, didn't you? Jesus. <laughs> 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 Sell it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know the limit lads on beards. Is that a, is that like a tribal thing? I, I don't just... know what but we're not the only ones with beards because there's also um, Danny. Yeah. Uh, Danny um, Ryan, he's another Limerick comedian with a beard. Yeah. Um, and then Kevin as well. Kevin has a beard. Stephen's clean shaven. Stephen Ryan is clean shaven, yeah. Stephen, Stephen Ryan, yeah. Yeah. But a beard wouldn't be Mayo frightens us. It's exotic. I think it's a lack of jawline for us, though. That's <laughs> like, it's only to hide the fact that like the jaw and the neck go like, straight into each other. Like. <laughs> My my chin is down here. My chin is here. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, double bit. This is this is more like a, cur a curtain, a drape. I'm just yeah, like, I trying to punch you in the beard. Like beard is nearly really good contouring. That's what you're trying to say. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and uh, Brian, how, how was the Ray Darcy auditions? I know you got were like in the like the semifinals. Oh, yeah, I it, I, I'd, I'd rather not discuss. I've I've left my comments online and they went a bit uh, as viral as uh, 30 likes. That's as viral as I get. So, wow. um, yeah, it's it's a that's long good. it's a long discussion. <laughs> but. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's good to be recognized, uh, you know, uh, get in with RTE. Yeah, that ain't going to happen if they're watching now, which you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Right, Brian, are, are you ready to hit the stage? Yep. Uh, I, headliner. Yep. Uh, oh, Jesus, this is not going to work out well as a headline. 
Oh, man, it's fine. Anyway, everybody, <laughs> put your hands together for Brian McCormack. Woo! I, I, I don't have any, I don't have any Woo! set material. Girl, I have, I have a bunch of throwaway jokes, so if they don't land, they're going out the window. So, uh, first one. Uh, I'm a big fan of sushi, <laughs> um, especially when it's battered, fried, and with chips. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I ever get a chance to open a coffee shop, I'll have to call it Coffee Whores. Just to have the slogan, we'll flick your beans. Um <laughs> We'll have a bakery that sells erogenous scones, and it's on my bucket list along with buying a bucket. Um, <laughs> here, here's a weird one. Do do drunk soon to be fathers piss in toilets and think if he's a boy, I'll name him Armitage Shanks. That one's a thinker. It is. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine works in a crematorium. Uh, surprisingly, his house does not have a fireplace, uh, but he does have a stone bake oven. <laughs> it's getting dark now, Jesus. Um, why do they call mountains the Widowmaker? Women can die climbing too, you know. That one has to win out the window. Uh, here's a question that Leonardo DiCaprio will always say yes to. Ever feel like a 40 year old man in a 20 year old's body? Oh, I that. <laughs> uh, I'm writing a scary film for Halloween next year. The working title is Your Dad's Cover Band Plays Say So by Doja Cat to Impress Your Deb State. <laughs> <laughs> this is a strange one. Uh, I just got back from the vivisection garage and boy are my arms tires. <laughs> Imagine living on the moon and someone comes up to you telling you about their flat moon theory when the horizon is 2.4 kilometers away over your shoulder. <laughs> and then, the last one is uh, farts are rude unless you shout fart louder than the fart then it cancels out. And that's the last of that. So thank you very much. Performing to literally like a camera and five people to laugh at you. Yeah. But uh, that's our show, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having Thanks. us. No, no. Welcome. Thank you. We had Brian Gallagher, Brian McCormick, Seamus Stackpool, Jack Horrigan, and Jess Collins. Hey. If you liked any of them, or if you liked any of them. Um, give them a follow on Instagram. You can see what they're up to. Uh, if you don't know their Instagram handle, give me a message. I'll, I'll find it. Uh, I've, I've got ways. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> we, uh, should we do a wave off? Should we just all say bye to the, to the viewers? Nah, fuck them. Fuck them. Nah. Fuck, em. <laughs> fuck you. Like the Brady. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for everybody who was commenting. Susie, you've been here for since it started. This was a huge call. Dave Brown and I think uh, Stephen Murphy as well I saw on YouTube. Yes, we will all wash our hands. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, comedians. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. 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 What's the game show where celebrities?